these guys, the leaders in kind of internet marketing, put in this conference, they came out and they said, Web 2.0. Now that term in and of itself is a claim, because if you know anything about software, software that would be on your computers like QuickBooks or Microsoft Word or anything like that, when, when people develop software and they release it, it's kind of the 1.0 version. And then if they do a full upgrade, they would release a 2.0 version. So just by saying Web 2.0, these guys are making a pretty big claim, saying that the web has somehow gone through a full upgrade since the 98 bubble. It's something drastically different. Something has changed. And they didn't really articulate what that was. Instead, they gave examples like Facebook, YouTube, um, Google. They gave all these examples. And then ever since, everybody's argued about what it means and all this, right? Well, essentially what it means is it's about usability. It's about the web being a tool. And now think about this. The web used to be, and to some people it still is, and this is the transition that I encourage everyone to make. It used to be that the, a web, the web is just a place, like a virtual um, waiting room where there are brochures, and you can open the brochure and look at it. It's like the waiting room of your local chamber, but a virtual one. And you're, the experience of going online is just to call up a page, and the page just sits there and you can read the content. That was the experience of the web, the kind of web 1.0. We're just publishing pages, and if you are the publisher, the business, then you control the content of that page. You put a picture on it, and you put some text on it, and you put it out in cyberspace, and you hope somebody calls it up on their computer and they're off. Well, at the same time, software, the applications that actually live on your machine, like QuickBooks and Microsoft Word, Microsoft Office, Excel, was just going through the roof with innovation. Now, look at the way it's just here to find out how to navigate the web a little bit faster. I'll And I'm trying to get one of the CEO and CEO president of Lifecraft Consulting. We're a local 10-person company. Uh, we have marketing, and software for about 10 years. And I'm going to try to get one of the CEOs and president of Lifecraft Consulting. We're a local 10-person company. We have marketing, software for about 10 years. And I'm going to try to get one of the CEOs and president of Lifecraft Consulting. We're a local 10-person company. We have marketing, software for about 10 years. And I'm going to try to get one of the CEOs and president of Lifecraft Consulting. We're a local 10-person company. We have marketing, software for about 10 years. Think about the websites that are considered Web 2.0, <clears throat> like Facebook. When you go to Facebook, you're not going there to read a page that was published by Facebook about their organization. You go there to use it as a tool. It's like Microsoft Word. You're pulling it up to engage with it. You're communicating with people. You're creating uh, networking opportunities. You're doing all that kind of stuff. It's a tool. When you go to YouTube, you're not reading content. It was printed by YouTube about how great their business was. You are watching videos submitted by the visitors themselves. They are controlling the content, and you are controlling the content. Even if you don't submit videos, you're rearranging the screen in front of you around your own personal preferences. The, the, the experience of the web has become one of unique, it's a unique experience for each individual. Not only the websites that you go to, but how those websites wrap themselves around you. You go to Bank of America, I log in, I've got, you know, they do a lot of my banking there, my personal banking there. I log in, the, the experience of the, of the screen changes itself around my personal information, where I see my accounts and my home mortgage, and I can make transfers and do all this activity, it's a tool. I'm not there to learn about Bank of America. I'm there to do something. This is Web 2.0. The web has shifted from being a place where you would publish a page and that someone will hopefully read to be a place where you can access tools to do activities that are tasks under objectives, under goals. <laughs> right? When you look at your having your own website, it's got to be a tool. It's got to be a tool to achieve your goals and objectives. It's got to be a tool to do tasks. So, it's on both sides. Your staff or yourself has to be able to log in and use it as a tool. Edit the content, change things, add things on a frequent basis, manage it so it's a functioning tool. If it's a static page that hasn't been changed in two years, it is not a tool. That is not a tool. No, there's no reason to come there. You could say, what's your goal or objective? Oh, my only objective for my website, my only objective is for someone to get my contact information. Fine. Put up a one-page website that is just white and has your logo and your contact information. Go list with um, yellowpages.com or whatever. Go list with um, search engines. Go uh, get in Google local. Do all the things that Ted was talking about. If that's your only objective, but I bet you have others. Position yourself professionally, maybe. A financial planner, for example, wants to position himself professionally. Well, how would a financial planner do that? Well, you can look at objectives. I want to have current, um, relevant content, and you can even say expert content. Well, if you want to have current relevant expert content, because the objective is to position yourself as an expert in your marketplace, 
then you have to do this. First of all, you have to have I should spell better. You have to have a way for people to find your website. So how do they find you? And is it the right person? So you don't just need traffic. You need quality traffic. Because you want the right person to find you. If you cannot serve somebody in Iowa, you don't want them to find you. It's a waste of your time, money, and effort. So, you've got to figure out, how do I get in front of people? If I want to be an expert in my local marketplace, how do I get in front of people in a local marketplace? Well, the answer to that would be search engine, but geographically oriented search. So that's going to be a, a big focus for you. Geo search. Geographically oriented search. A big tool for that for you, if you're involved in geographic search, and most of you probably are, is to go to Google Local. And he, he probably talked about that. Um, Ted did, I would imagine. But anyway, listen to Google Local. It's a tool. Right? Now, if you're wanting to have current, relevant, expert content, you have to publish content a lot. Well, you might not be able to afford, or it might be silly to pay, a company like mine to do all of that work for you. When you can either do it yourself or have an administrative assistant publish content for you if they only have the right to do Chris. You're on. You're on. on. Hi, Chris. Randall Fullerton is a consultant at IT Solutions. We are a small business and technology consultant firm, and we work with small businesses here in the greater Charlotte region. In fact, I got my start as a small business by attending CCCC's A plus certification and training course. That was many years ago, and I'm here today to try and get that. Good job. Its way into our business models. Finally, you know, the big bust at the end of the 90s was the web is so amazing. You know, you can make Clinton dance. Look, what do you know? <laughs> you know, but how is that going to make money for your company? It's finally happening. It's finally happening. And it's all about web 2.0. And I know people, a lot of people are tired of hearing that term and all that. Anyway, another <coughs> example would be who? Who does what would like to volunteer? What business are you in? Yes, ma'am. Well, I'm a cultural educator, and that means storytelling, poetry. I do special occasions um, to kind of support the community work I do. But, I mean, I was just going to say, I do have a MySpace page, and it works. Like, people look on it, and, you know, I'm, I'm in contact with, like, bands and people who might want somebody, you know, to kind of open for them and stuff like that. And I can update it. Bands and teenagers. MySpace is where you go. <laughs> Bands and teenagers. But it's also promoters. It's also, I mean, most of y'all are probably not entertainers. But, I mean, like the evening music, yeah. you know, network on that. But so, okay, so here's what you're doing, essentially. You're using a tool that already exists. You figured out how to just create an account. It's a networking tool. It's a web 2.0 type tool. If you were going to have a website, what you would want to do, in my opinion, is you would want to piggyback on your MySpace success. You would want to drive people from your MySpace that were more serious over to your website. And you would want to have a similar community style experience. And you want to make sure that whatever technology that you're building in has the ability to integrate with MySpace and Facebook because those are the types of people that you are working with in the network. So your prospects on Facebook, your prospects on MySpace, funnel them into a website. There's two lessons to that from my point of view. One is do not imitate what other people are doing. Like, they don't know what they're doing either. <laughs> I, mean, yeah. I mean, you can learn from other people, but you gotta, you got to have the confidence to think about doing things a little bit differently. And learn from other industries. If your industry doesn't know what it's doing yet in the web, look at the industries that do. The realtors have started to figure out what they're doing. The realtors I work with are bringing in 80% of their business to their websites. They know what they're doing when it comes online. Imitate um, industries that are already successfully using web. So that's one lesson. Don't imitate what other people are doing. The second lesson is, God, that was good too. I can't remember. <laughs> that was good. But um, the, se oh, the second lesson is, is that when, they, when, when somebody comes here, you're calling them to an action. And that is such an old piece of advice. It's like, again, the web is not inventing anything new. It's just enhancing your ability to do the same thing that everybody's been telling me before. Right? You know, uh, uh, all the guerrilla marketing guys and all these guys always tell you, you know, print ad or whatever it is, explain what you do and how it benefits. You know, say, here's what we do, here's how it benefits you, and then here's what you should do now. Call them to action. Someone's probably rushing out the front door, oh my gosh, I need to get them over. Pop the computer on, click on free quote, type in their information, send me a quote. 
They get to the office and quotes on their desk. That's right. what most people are doing right now. See, that's See, great. we had it embedded like three or four pages down where you had to click on three quotes and then it took you to another page. And right. Well, there's another lesson. You need to organize your whole web presence around your primary conversion. In other words, <coughs> like, let's say a plumber. If a plumber says, look, I just want people to call me. I don't need a website. I just want them to call me. I say, no, no, no. A website's not competing with the phone. A website can help get people to call you. So if your major conversion is to get people to call you, then let's figure out what would get somebody to call you. And they might say, well, you know, knowing that I have 24-hour emergency service might get them to call me. Knowing the telephone number might get them to call me, right? Mm -hmm. Having access to the telephone number on the spot when you're having an emergency might get somebody to call me. Well, I would say, make your homepage, first of all, make sure you are high in search engine ranking, and make your homepage say, here's our number, 24-hour emergency customer support, support, call us right now. You know, that's it. And then if you want to have consumer awareness information in terms of this and that, or have a blog, all that can help your search engine um, placement and all that stuff, that's fine. But build your whole web presence. I mean, your search optimization and all the coding that's done around your major conversion. So here you've had your free quote, which is what you want people to do, your main action, buried deep in your website. Right? Mm -hmm. Go to um, one of the major insurance companies online. And what is big, 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 right there in your face when you land it? Get a free quote. That's what they want you to do. Right? How are you doing? I'm Tyrone Helms, uh, president of Helms Systems uh, LLC. We, uh, we do website development, um, IT consulting, and we're out of Fort Mill, South Carolina. So I'm um, happy to meet my friend from Rep Flow and the rest of the uh, talent here. <laughs> the rest of the talent here. And so uh, look me up at uh, www.helmsystems.com. Graphic design, okay, make it exceptionally well designed. <laughs> I hire designers pretty regularly. And um, I, I go there and I, I make an impression upon what I see and I leave and it's not really well designed. And it doesn't even have to look like my clients. I don't want it. I want it to look really pushing the envelope. Because I know if they can do that, they can do a corporate website. You know, that's not that hard to do for a talented designer. So I want a designer site to be exceptional. Now don't do flash because you can be nowhere in the search engines. Unless you already have a major reputation, you can't really do flash because you're just in business. Um, writing content about graphic design, maybe I wouldn't read it, I wouldn't really care. I want to see it, I want to see it. You know, so I would say that the experience should be like a really out of the box kind of website, something you wouldn't expect. Not just your framed up, not your normal framed up thing, just something really interesting. You know? And then I would say the experience needs to be Look at my work, look at my work, and I'll show off your clients. Show off your clients. And one bit of advice to you, and, 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 and excuse me for giving advice, because I can take it from you as well as you can take it from me, but uh, I've worked with a lot of designers, and the best advice I have for you is not to pretend like you're bigger than you are. Just be yourself. Because, man, these people are like, oh, we're a corporate business. I'm like, no, you're not. You live in your mom's basement. <laughs> <laughs> you create the site in a blog style fashion where you have. Um, Another big characteristic of a blog is that, um, you know, you have your pattern here, where, is that the most recent piece of content is the focus of the site. Instead of you landing there and saying, um, our company was founded in, you know, it says the most recent piece, like the top ten ways to avoid a lawsuit when it comes to management of blah, 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 blah. You know, it's like, interesting. It's specific. And it's the most recent, and then you've got to read more links. So you've got the title. And then you've got some of the first paragraph, and you've got to read more. Then you've got the title of the one before that paragraph, read more. So when I come to your site, even if I'm not interested in this, I can see your categories here, like DNA this, and testing, and whatever. I come to your site, I am interested in the fact that you know what you're talking about. Even not writing about my specific need, you obviously know what you're talking about. You publish one instead of all at once, it helps your search engine rating. Because Google's about frequency, not necessarily quantity. Quantity is good, but free. Coming back as much as you can. Right, right corner, upper right corner, put your primary call to action. Whatever that might be. Click here for a free quote. Click here for a free analysis. Uh, click here for a, a free consultation. Click here to schedule a consultation. Whatever it is. And then every page they're on, no matter what they're reading about, and they are getting reinforced, reinforced, they're always, they're always tempted by that record. They call to action. Have it be visible throughout this entire experience of the website.
Curtis, would you mind introducing your company and yourself? I do. Um, uh, ClickCom. We're a website design company here in Charlotte. And I'm Curtis Burke. We're on with you. The best thing you can do, in my opinion, is to come to some a couple of realizations. And they are these. First of all, there's no reason to invest money in any technology if it's not going to function in your business model to generate revenue. Or lower expenses. Secondly, anything you build online should be a system, not a thing, not a page. Any type of page has to be changed manually. It's just a hole to dump money into. Right? You want to create a system so that you can have yourself and your assist, uh, administrative assistant and whomever can incorporate that system into your business model. They log in every Monday and they make this change and add this listing. They log in every Wednesday and they check the database of people who filled out the form. They, you integrate it into an activity system in your building, into your business model. But it has to be a system for you to be able to do that, a technological system, not a collection of pages. We move beyond that. That was Web 1.0. We're now in a new world of the web. So I, I've got to end because it's like 6.30. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you.